G, is there anybody in anywhere that you think can compete with Tesla? Traditional auto, no. I mean, that, if you're gonna ask which traditional auto is best positioned to even remotely compete, it's probably Volkswagen followed by GM. Now, Volkswagen's ambitious EV roadmap and existing lineup of cars like the Porsche Taycan, the ID3 hatchback, and the soon to be released ID4 crossover can't be ignored. However, I think that VW's competitive recognition is mostly thanks to Herbert Diess publicly chasing Tesla for years. Uh, we are quite optimistic that we still can keep the pace with Tesla and uh, also at some stage probably overtake. VW has done a great job, but I'm not convinced that they've followed Elon Musk's simple strategy. Spend less time on, on finance, spend less time in conference rooms, uh, le less time on PowerPoint, and more time just trying to make your product as amazing as possible. There's only one way that you can compete with Tesla, and it means throwing out the old school rule book and making sure that you don't make any compromises. Herbert Diess and his rapid electrification process has already caused corporate chaos, and trying to juggle multiple brands makes it even harder to create the perfect possible EV at the best price. This means that before making the ID4 as amazing as possible, they need to consider its high margin Audi e-tron EVs. It means less range and less performance for the ID4. This is a mistake that Tesla avoided with the Model 3. In fact, the Model 3 was so great that sales of their very own Model S collapsed even with multiple price cuts over the years. The only product that I think adopts this amazing as possible product strategy is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Ford put its most valuable brand on the line, even though they knew it would enrage some customers. And sure, you could call it easy marketing. However, from a development standpoint, calling it a Mustang was kind of a genius move. It meant that the engineers had the freedom to go all in and make no sacrifices with the Mustang. As a result, the Mach-E has the most competitive specs when compared to Tesla's Model Y. Ford did everything right here. You can tell that they locked the bean counters out of the room when developing the Mach-E because it comes standard with that 15-inch infotainment system. With the ID4, the base model comes standard with a smaller display because they chose profits over customer experience. Ford also took a few pages out of Tesla's rulebook. It's possible to use your phone as a key and they developed a unique door mechanism to create a sleek aerodynamic design. It even comes standard with a front trunk that has drain plugs so that you can use it as a cooler. The Mach-E can also receive extensive over-the-air updates, including anything from the infotainment system to the brakes. When it comes to range, the single motor setup with the large battery pack achieves a 300 mile EPA rated range, which is actually something many other automakers have been promising for years, but failing to deliver on. Granted, this range does come from using a massive 98 kilowatt hour battery pack. And if you want the Mach-E to have the same zero to 60 performance as the long range or performance Model Y, efficiency takes a big dive. However, Ford is playing it safe as the usable battery capacity is much less. Also, I am waiting to see what the real world range tests on the Mach-E are going to be because EPA comparisons aren't always reliable. Based on tests by Inside EVs, the Taycan 4S got around 277 miles of range driving at a constant 70 miles per hour versus its EPA estimate of just 203 miles. Tom Malofny did a similar test with the Model Y and got around 275 miles versus the then EPA rating of 315 miles. That's basically the same result despite having a 112 mile difference between EPA ratings, so I really can't wait to see how the Mach-E performs on a similar test. Given its massive battery pack, we can only hope that the Mach-E at least achieves its EPA rating, which would give Ford some vindication when it comes to efficiency. Now, I'm a really big fan of what Ford is doing with the Mach-E. While other automakers have been and are still talking about delivering compelling mass market EVs with 300 miles of range within the next few years, Ford is actually delivering on that promise today. Now of course the Mach-E isn't a Tesla killer and it still lags behind the Model Y in a few areas, however it is a little bit more affordable especially with that federal tax credit and most importantly it's all about having more options to choose from. Also unlike Tesla Ford has an extensive dealer and service network. There are still some states that stupidly ban Tesla from operating in their state because they don't use the dealership model. Now I'm not a big fan of dealerships, but I do hope they take advantage of these dealers which are often located right off of highways and install some fast charging stations. 
If the Mach-E is successful, the entire company would get the green light from Ford investors and executives to accelerate their efforts towards electrification. And since we know that Ford can already make a great EV, all they need to do is figure out battery supply and get to work. All right, with that, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think the Mach-E will be successful or do you think I'm giving Ford too much credit?